My name is Sanaya. My name is Augustia. And today we will continue our story from Mostly Ghostly Stories, written by Subhadra Sen Gupta. But what is the name of the story? The story's name is Ajji's Abacus, part 3. Before watching this video, we recommend watch part 1 and part 2 first. Yes, and now part 3 will begin, so make sure you listen close. Okay. Then we saw Amma come hurrying down the lane and ran up to meet her. What's the matter? Are you ill? No, I'm not. She said shortly, Where's your appa? I have news. The cooks had gone off after lunch, so appa served amma in the kitchen. She ate a handful of rice and pumpkin curry and said, The women at the Zenana are talking so much that someone has gone and told Queen Tirumala Devi everything. Oh no! Appa's eyes were wide with worry. Has she spoken to his majesty? Does Krishna Dev Raya know? Amma shook her head. She called me and wanted to know the truth. So I told her everything. She agreed with me that Raghavendra could not be a thief, but that he was not doing his job properly. Then I persuaded her to wait and let Saluva Timma decide went to inform his majesty. Amma ate some more as we waited, holding our breaths, and then said, The queen then summoned the dweller who had discovered the theft. The man said that the fake necklaces were so well made that Raghu could have not spotted the difference. I asked him if he knew any dweller in Vijayanagar who made such a glass jewelry. Amma frowned. He said something very odd that the workmanship was not a Vijayanagar. This kind of glass jewel work was done elsewhere. Where? In the cities of Bijapur and Golconda. We stared at her in shock. These two kingdoms were our enemies, often attacking Vijayanagar. So this could be a planned theft by Bijapur to take revenge for their defeat at Raichur. The royal family believes in omens and they may think this will bring them bad luck. As it is, Tirumala Devi is anxious about the fact that his majesty does not have a son and heir. Appa sat holding his chin. If Raghu loses his job or is sent to prison, do you know what will happen to the inn? Amma nodded grimly. One of the reasons our inn was always full was because of Uncle Raghu. Many visitors came to the temple all year round. Storytellers, gurus, poets, dancers and musicians and he put them up at our inn. Then, during festivals, food was supplied to feed the devotees. The temple was our biggest customer and we would lose a lot of business without his help. I had to talk to Ajji. I rattled the abacus. What? She sounded very irritable. And I remembered Ajji's afternoon nap was very important. Listen, I have news. I still think it is one of them. Diwakar or Kartikeyan, or both together. They did not find anything in their houses. Of course they won't. They are not stupid to hide the necklaces under their mattresses. So keep an eye on them. Her voice faded and she was gone. Obeying Ajji, we decided to keep an eye on Diwakar, the assistant priest, and Kartikeyan, the guard. Both were at home, 
with the two soldiers sitting and yawning at their doors. Neither was allowed into the temple. Divakar lived close by, but Kartikeyan was a poor man and lived at the other end of Hampi village. The Hemkut Hill stood right next to the temple. To get his home, we would have to walk for a long time along the hill, past the giant image of Ganesh that stood on top. Then I remembered something Amma said. When she heard that Kartikeyan was a suspect, she shook her head. He is an old man who has worked in the temple all his life. Why would he steal now? Also, he is a simple man. I cannot see him planning something so clever. Big diamonds, then finding a good hiding place. A pun on it. I agree. But what about Diwakar? I remember Diwakar's face. The narrow nose and the high forehead where he always wore the sandalwood mark of Shiva. A small firm mouth that never smiled and sharp eyes that did not miss anything. When we went to watch the puja, he was always there beside Uncle Raghu, helping with the rituals and chanting the mantras, lighting the lamps and waving the incense. He looked like a very religious man. Could such a man steal? Amma popped a pan into her mouth and chewed thoughtfully. He is young and clever and much smarter than Raghu. He could easily plan something like this. Also, remember he is the son of the last head priest. When his father died suddenly, he wasn't pleased that Raghu was chosen instead of him. He said he was a scholar of sacred Sanskrit texts and that he had been trained by his father in the right rituals. I think I knew who can steal the necklace. Hold on to your thoughts, Agastya. Let's not break the suspense. Yeah, you're right. Raghu was the assistant priest and Diwakar was just helping in the Devi Pampa shrine. And Raghu is a scholar too. Appa protested. Amma chewed and shrugged. We can suspect anyone we like, but as long as the necklaces are not found, there is no proof against anyone. Pampa and I were not key, but Keshav and Ranga were very enthusiastic about keeping a watch. Soon, they were hanging around the gate of Diwakar's house until the guards shooed them away. So they returned when it was dark and loitered in the back lane where the guards could not see them. Pampa and I got the whole story the next morning on the way to the river. Ranga was so excited he was nearly dancing down the lane. We saw Diwakar sneak out of the house, he sang out. Leave his house? Pampa stared at her brother. How could he? There are guards at the door. Back window! Back window! Keshav and Ranga had crept out after dinner and settled down in the back lane where they saw a downstairs window open. A man very carefully clambered out. Was it Diwakar? I asked. Keshav shrugged. It was too dark. The street torches had died down and we all saw a shadow. The man bent low and slowly crept down the lane. So we hid behind a tree, Ranga joined in. He crossed the road and went behind the inn. Kesha went on. Our inn? I stared at him. Yes, we hid around the corner. Luckily, it was a moonless night. Two men were waiting for him, and they began to whisper in a huddle. Couldn't you hear anything? The boys shook their heads. We were too far away. Just then, some people entered the lane from the opposite side and began to walk towards us. The three men 
quickly moved away and the man we think was Divakar walked back the way he had come. So we followed him and saw him climb back into the house from that open window. Then Ranga was so excited he could barely speak. We saw the other two men turn and enter the inn. They are right here in our inn. By then, even Keshav was doing a dance. We can catch them now. This is fun solving the mysteries with your friends. Yeah, right. Let's continue. In our inn, Pampa and I were so surprised, we stopped walking and stood staring at the boys. Later, while drying her wet hair, Pampa asked, What do we do next? I was trying to remember the guests in the inn. We had ten rooms, four rooms on the ground floor and six on the first floor. A nobleman and his large family had booked all the six rooms on the first floor. On the ground floor, the two sari merchants from Kanchipura had one room a singer performing at the palace and her daughter had the second room. The third room was empty and the fourth room there were two men who said they were from Anamalai and had come to buy brass wave. Two rooms have two men in them. I turned to the boys. You couldn't see their faces? They shook their heads. My brain was clicking away. The men from Kanchipuram have been here for a long time and they could have met Diwakar easily before the theft was discovered but the men from Anamalai came yesterday. Oh, I remembered something, Keshav sat up. I served them dinner and they spoke Kannad with a strange accent as if it was not their mother tongue. One man couldn't remember that our salad is called Kosambiri and kept saying, I want mixed raw vegetables, until I guessed what he meant. We have to check them out. Pampa got up. Time is running out. I had to ask, do we tell Uncle Raghu what the boy saw? The others immediately shook their heads. Oh no, Pampa added. Appa and Amma are in such a bad mood, they would snap my head off. They wouldn't believe us anyway, Keshav agreed. Whoever believes what children tell them? Amma will say I am making it up. Ranga gave a gloomy shake of his tussled head. Well, you do imagine things, Pampa pointed out. Remember the story you told of a meeting a tiger behind Hemakut Hill? Ranga just shrugged and then added, Appa is hardly home anyways. He is always at the temple. Why? I asked. They are checking everything in the treasury, Pampa explained. Appa, the dweller, and a man from Minister Timma's office are opening every box and checking everything. Jewelry, gold coins, silver utensils, gold and silver images. So Appa eats and sleeps at the temple. Have they found anything else missing? Pampa shook her head. We decided that we would watch the traders from Anamalai for the rest of the day and then report everything to Amma when she came back from the Zenana in the afternoon. She would know what to do, I said. Keshav nodded in agreement. Appa will just get excited and upset and flap about. He is useless in a crisis. Then he nodded thoughtfully, I have a plan. Whenever we get guests, I have to take down their name and address in the register as the royal officers come to check about guests. Also, Appa always chats when he welcomes new guests. So, I knew the two men were called Vishnu Chettiar and Shiva Raman and they had given the address of a shop in the main market of Anamalai. 
It was not suspicious at all as most of our guests were either pilgrims or traders. An hour later, Kejav stood outside their door holding a broom and a wet mop in a pot of water. Sir, he knocked, can I come and clean the room please? A sleepy Shiva Raman opened the door and let him in. Standing at the end of a corridor, busily dusting a perfectly clean shelf, I watched him go in. It was a while before he came out and we hurried into the office and closed the door. The story is getting interesting. You are right! As Keshav dropped the broom and the mop in a corner, I clacked the abacus beads and then asked breathlessly, Did you hear anything? I'm sure they are not from Anamalai because then they should have been speaking in Tamil. They were speaking in Telugu and I couldn't understand everything, but I heard the word Kolkonda and also Nawab. Aji spoke. Aji spoke. The city of Golconda is the capital of the Bhamani Nawabs. They have diamond mines there. Also rubies? Nah. Rubies come from another land across the seas. That's why they are so expensive. They cost more than diamonds. She would know. She paid all the jewelry bills of the queens and princesses. Oh, I nearly forgot. I found this under the bed. Keshav pulled out a sheet of crumpled paper from his pocket. I laid it out on the diwan as we bent over it and I felt the soft, ajji style breeze around my right ear. Are you reading over my shoulders, ajji? How else will I know what's written there? The words scrawled on the paper were a mix of words and numbers. On the top it said, garlands of roses and jasmine. Four big roses plus 12 small roses plus 24 jasmines into two. 200 times four equals 800. 150 into 12 equals 1800 75 into 24 equals 1800 4400 into 2 equals 8800 ah said Aji quietly into my ear nice you know what this means no but the calculations are done correctly how does it help if we don't know what it means Aji what is it? The price of flowers? I was still staring at the words and suddenly it popped into my mind. Of course, it means jewels. White jasmines are diamonds and roses are red rubies. Durga is smart. Yes. Looks like you do have the brains, Durga. So this is the value of the necklaces. Each big ruby is worth 200 gold pana coins and each necklace is worth 4400 gold panas and then multiplied by 2, I stared at the total at the bottom, 8800 gold panas. That's a lot of money! Keshav shook his head in wonder. I have never ever seen a gold pana coin why do you think they stole it aji had the last word and this is the end of part three. Oh no but the story is getting so interesting i know but you still have to wait for the next part which is the last part of the story. Hmm, okay. So guys, if you want to know who stole the necklaces and how they find out the missing jewelry, we will see you in our next video. Bye! Bye.